Okay, welcome. Hare Krishna. Jai. So, how's everybody? How are you doing, Edward? Doing pretty good. How's, oh, how are you? Doing, um, yes. Um, I've got a, a commentary from, from somebody from a different lineage that I'd be interested in reading if that's, if that's okay. Okay, what's the, what's the... It's, it's um, Nyaneshwar. He was um, a Maharashtran saint from about 200 years before Chaitanya. Have you ever seen the movie? No. You should watch the movie of Nyaneshwar. Uh-huh. It's, it's, it's a cool movie. I'm sure. Yeah, I've, I've read a lot of stories about him. I'm sure it's some, some yogi. Uh, he's riding on a tiger, and he's he's uh, he has some animosity towards Ganeshwar, and there's a whole like cool scene about that. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a cool movie. I, I haven't seen it in a long time, but I actually, my my friend Jason, I just saw that he has it on DVD. So mm-hmm. I know a lot. Find a, a computer that actually has a DVD player. <laughs> Maybe get a copy. Right. How's uh how's the practices going? Pretty good. Last couple of weeks I've been less uh, dedicated, I guess you could say. Um, I've I've been practicing, but just not as as thoroughly as I was before. So, but uh, yeah, it's good. I'm I'm still enjoying it a lot. Just. Uh, Mind, mind on other things these days. Well, Chapuji, Hare Krishna. Hare Bol, how Hare are Bol. you? Como esta? Bien, y tu? Como vas? Bien, bien. Me alegro. Uh, how's your <laughs> Gita practice? How's everything? Mm, it's going good. I've been talking to Evan, um, yeah. uh, uh, making a Evan. review from verse 10. And we're getting there. Nice. Evan in ecstasy. Yes. In ecstasy, yeah. <laughs> Narayani, Evan is going, he went to the temple for the first time ever. And he's going to the Soho Street temple. I was going to ask if it's a man or Soho Street. Awesome. Yeah. And um, he's doing some kind, I think he's doing yoga training there in, in, in London. So he, He's, while he's there, he's um, meeting up with the devotees for the first time. He said he was nervous, but then he, he's liking it. Sweet. And how are you? I'm doing well. I apologize that I cannot come on a weekly basis. I don't even make the commitment to to learn everything. I'm just I'm just enjoying devotee company and. Oh reading i i read more than i practice mm. learning shlokas our, our our friend carlos who's in the class as well he started in the middle of chapter 15 but he used the classes and he did and eventually work his way all the way to uh, the middle again and so he has chapter 15 um and Chapuji and some others are there sometimes meet up if you ever want to meet up with them to practice. All right, so let's let's start our verse. 711. Let me grab my book. <clears throat> Who did we we had I think we had one more person here that we Dropped out. I don't remember who it was. I think it was uh, it was Dana, Dana K. Dana K. Oh yes, yes. I don't think she's. Must I think she's out in the country? Maybe. All right. So seven eleven. Balam balavatam chaham, kamaraga vivarjitam. Dharma Aviruddha Bhuteshu Kamosmi Bharatarshaba Balam Balabatam Chaham Kamaraga Vivarjitam Dharma Aviruddha Bhuteshu Kamosmi Bharatarshaba So translation 
I am the strength of the strong that is devoid, devoid of passion and desire. One second. I think there is an important commentary on that that we that we included. One second. Seven eleven. Oh, here we are. Kama and Raga, devoid of Kama and Raga. This is a um, Baladeva Yibushan. He says, I'm that strength which is devoid of the desire of Kama, the desire of maintaining oneself and the desire for material objects. And Raga means after the having attained the desired object, one still hankers for more. Another name for raga is excessive thirst for material enjoyment, which contaminates co the consciousness. Strength devoid of common raga enables one to, one to perform one's prescribed duty properly. So if you, you can just think, hey, Hare Krishna, we can see you now. If you think of like someone in a political position, you know, that's power power so if you can imagine that power free from the desire to to get something to gain something and also to uh, you know, excessive uh, uh, it's basically free from the desire to gain something and free from the desire of of greed strength uh, devoid of common raga enables one's one to perform one's prescribed duties properly. So generally, yeah, for for a ruler, if he's free from excessive, if he's free from kind of a fruitive uh, plan of how he's using his power and and it free from greed, then he can be a nice ruler. He's, he's not uh, manipulating things according to his particular desire. He can actually perform his duties. Okay, I'll go back to the purport. And I am that sex life, which is not contrary to religious principles, dharma, avirudho, O Lord of the Bharatas, kamosmi, kamosmi Bharatar Shiva. Purport, purport's really strong, I and really short. The strong man's strength should be applied to the protection of the weak not for personal aggression. Well, that's the same point there. Similarly, sex life, according to religious principles, dharma, should be used for the propagation of children and not otherwise. The responsibility of parents is to make their offspring Krishna conscious. So it's a very short purport. Prabhupada spoke in the commentary and in uh, his lectures, he spoke about this verse in, in great detail. Um, so he talks about this word shastra because we're saying dharma avirudho, being not not against sastra. So this shastra comes from this shash datu, shash the root uh, shash, and it means to regulate. So you have um, the word. Shastra, which means weapon, Sastra, and you have Shastra, which is scripture, and you also have the word Shashan, which means government. So in everything, there needs some regulation, like Prabhupada even gives example, even something not nice, like a wine shop, there's still, you have to get a license, because, you know, these, these things have... Uh, implications for example if we say well i just want to drive however i want to drive i want to drive on the left uh, i want to drive on the right i don't care if i'm in germany or in switzerland or if in america i just drive whatever side i want then the regu then such regulations actually create um, a sense of safety and peacefulness in society and so in the beginning of the bhagavad gita arjuna mentions that if 
there is unregulated sex life, then you have what is called varna sankara. You have uh, unwanted children, un, uh, unplanned, unwanted children, and not just the social circumstance of birth, but even the meditation of birth creates a particular type of uh, sangskar, a particular type of impression. Of course, the you know the, the 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 social situation, having a mother and a father there, that it also creates a particular type of impression. If we look at statistics, it's uh, children that didn't ha have the opportunity to have both parents more susceptible to, uh, for depression, more susceptible to uh, um, taking shelter of intoxication, more susceptible towards crime. And so Arjuna says, when, when the, there's no uh, proper regulation in sex life, it creates vanar sankara, creates unwanted children, unwanted children, and such unwanted children create a hellish condition in life. And, and Prabhupada said, uh, our modern world is an example of that. We're all, we don't have uh, the nice impressions. So we have a lot of um, baggage that we're carrying from past lives and, and, and this, the impressions that we're growing up with. So we know this, you might be familiar with this word, verse, yum, yum, I was just listening. I think it was yesterday we're talking about it, or I don't know, I listened to an old lecture and I listened to yesterday's lecture. So I'm not sure which one is it, but I know um, Raghu was talking about the yum, yum verse. Oh, Nana K is there. Yum, yum, vapi smaram bhavan tajate ante kalevram tam tam eve to kuntea sadad tad bhava bhavitaha. So in the eighth chapter, Krishna says, whatever you remember at the time of death, the uh, ante, ante, the end, kalevram of the body, that you become. You'll become, you'll get a body suitable for that. Oh yeah, it was a question and answers. I think it was a question and answers where somebody was asking about, um, a death in a uh, peaceful situation or a death in a kind of, uh, I think that's when they brought up that verse. Does anybody remember that? Uh, okay. So Krishna is explaining how you take birth um, according to your meditation on your path, from your past life, which you're, it's like you go to the shopping, uh, go to the grocery store, you put everything in the basket, and you come to the register, and what happens? You gotta pay for it. It comes the bill. So similarly, we take all kinds of impression, we live this life. At the end, we get our remembrance. We get a particular type of remembrance. As sometimes we hear your life flashes before you at the time of death. I've I know a devotee who he said he had drowned, and he said he tried to remember he's at the time he was a teenager and he remembered the catholic boarding school teacher the nun telling him just remember god when you die and he said all he could remember was girls and drugs because that was what his life was about <laughs> and um he said everything was just flowing through his consciousness and he just, that was kind of a, that was a turning point in his life. He's like, okay, I, he had a, this impression that it wasn't leading to where he wanted to go. It was not leading to an auspicious destination. So he was a bit worried and he started on his spiritual journey. Of course, as Kastuba and Ragnar, as they mentioned in the question and answers, it's not a mechanical thing. We, we give ourselves to Krishna. And Krishna also gives himself to us. Uh, I believe they mentioned that one holy place where you go, if you die, Lord Shiva screams into your ear, Goranga. So similarly, there's, um, how many of you have heard of Ramanujacharya? So Ramanujacharya, he is the, just like Madhvacharya is the head of the, 
Brahma Sampradaya. He is the Acharya for the Brahma Sampradaya. Ramanuja is the head of the Sri Sampradaya. His anniversary, thousand year anniversary was about two years ago. And so Ramanuja, he had some questions, some doubt that he wanted answered. And he went to his friend, who's a priest at the, uh, the uh, Sri Rangam temple. And he, he said, my dear friend, can you please pray for me that I have my uh, questions answered? I have, I have some questions. Please, can you pray, pray that I get these questions answered? And the next day, his friend came up to him and said, oh, the Lord came to me in a dream. And he gave me five verses as answers to your questions. He's like, wait, you don't even know the questions. And then he, he gave him the answers. And he was like, whoa, that's. And so one of the answers was, my devotee, uh, um, if my devotee does not remember me at the time of death, I will remember him. So it's not a mechanical thing. And um, also the Kurma Purana says the same thing, that the, the, the Lord, if it is not like, okay, I have, um, if my death is in some like car accident and, I, and I'm having, or if it's, I'm in a coma or something like that, Krishna says, if my devotee, you know, is, if he has dedicated himself with love to me, I will dedicate myself with love to him. It's not just some yogic mental strength. I have big powers of mental strength. So just like how we uh, take birth based on the consciousness of our path, past life, we also attract souls to take birth within our family by the consciousness we are having. Oh, everybody see a huge glare? I think I can move it or something. Uh, close curtains. Still there. Is that better? All good? So just like we are we take birth on the we due to the consciousness that we've cultivated. Uh, I think Prabhupada gave the example like a bee gathers honey from different flowers. If uh, you, some of you may know, you can take, you can get honey of different flavors. I like can get lavender honey based on where those bees are getting its flower, where it's getting the nectar from the flowers. And someone's at the door one second. <laughs> One second, I'm giving. She's, I think she's in the bathroom. Now? Yes, I think so. Okay. Uh, I come. I'm giving a class here uh, online. Yeah. Well, you can come in. Hare Krishna. This is Mother Ishri. Uh -huh. She speaks Italian and uh -huh. Spanish. I speak Italian, Spanish, a little bit English. A little bit English, yeah. We're doing a Bhagavad Gita memorization class, all chapter now. seven, yeah. Now, we have kind of problem. I, I, have, I don't need nothing. I only see you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Welcome. And uh, five minutes away. I don't know. I think she's in the restaurant. Okay. Huh? Maybe I see there before. Okay. Uh, after. Okay. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. But. Oh, <laughs> yeah, effulgence. <laughs> Artificial effulgence. Like, what's that? Uh, the demon who dressed himself like Krishna with the fake arms. <laughs> 
on who's uh i forget his name uh pandraka pandraka he was pretending to be krishna and um he wrote a letter to krishna and all the people in dwarka and, and said you know you're fake vasudev i'm the real vasudev and they opened the letter and everyone was cracking up laughing and then they went to go fight a battle against Pandraka. When they saw him, he had his like fake arms attached to his back, four arms. And again, everyone was laughing, 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 had a good laugh at the demon. Okay. So just like how we, our body that we get in this life is a cultivation of our desires from our past life, like Mozart. He was able to compose symphonies at the age of four. So what was he cultivating? What was he interested in his past life? This is something that he's carrying on from one life to another. So similarly, we attract different souls within our family by the consciousness we have during the time of sexual conception, during the time of sex. So therefore, in the ancient Vedic system, there is what is called Garbhadang Sanskar. There's a whole ceremony to create a uh, high Krishna conscious, you know, there's a, there, generally devotees have a kind of simplified ceremony. They, they chant lots of rounds, 50 rounds is the kind of uh, main standard. In India, they may have more and more different elements to it as well. And the whole point is to become Krishna conscious, to have a nice consciousness, to attract and uh, pious souls who can bring a good change about this world and have also have um, opportunity to themselves continue on in, in their journey and go back to the spiritual world. Prabhupada said, we should not have children just like cats and dogs. We should try to create, let me see, my, my uh, for some reason, can you explain a little about about the some about the samskara ceremonies? Okay, so I just was listening to a Prabhupada lecture on this. I, for some reason, my chat is always like super huge font, and I don't know how to do. It. I don't see any option to make it smaller. Let me try the control minus. Oh, there we go. Control minus. There we go. Now it's like regular size. It's like the the words get stretched out and it's like one one letter and then another letter it was like extreme giant font okay i was just listening to Prabhupada lecture and he was saying how they and in india just like when you have a wedding you invite your friends and you tell them you have a ceremony and stuff like that so the garbadan samskara they're not going to invite their friends to like the bedroom obviously but they would invite their friends they would have a ceremony and say hey this is a ceremony as a blessing to bring in a krishna conscious or a spiritually conscious child and we're gonna you know we're gonna do this japa we're gonna probably there's a a yagya i i don't know all the different elements but Prabhupada did say it wasn't a private thing it was it was a public thing everyone please give your blessings we're now going to try to have uh, a successful And he, he also mentioned that when we have sex just for in, the enjoyment, that's kind of the sudra level or lower. The brahmanas, the, the kshatriyas, they had more of this refined uh, approach towards it. And therefore, you have the example of Kashapa Muni. We were listening in the Bhagavatam from Wisdom of Sages. There's a story of how Hranikashipu was born. His wife came to uh, DT came to Kashap and said, hey, I want to, you know, I want to do something right now. And he said, no, 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 this is not the right time. This is not the right time. And she kept on insisting and he said, okay, but they're going to come out little demons. And they came out these little, uh, not little demons, they came out, Hranikashipu, Hraniranyaksha. You know, they're very powerful demons. Of course, that's, that's uh, Krishna's arrangement. But for ourselves, we don't want to have that. We want to have nice Krishna conscious children. Therefore, it's recommended to take sex life even as a meditation. Now, 
how many of you have, there's a book called, let's see, let me go to my books. One second. It is a book about marriage. Um, Christian Conscious, Heart and Soul Connection, Devotional Guide to Marriage, Service and Love. And so one of the points in one of the chapters, they have the, what is called the hot potato chapter. Now, hot potato means nobody wants to hold on to it. Nobody wants to touch it. And so that is the subject of sexual intercourse within marriage. Let's see. Hot potato table contents. Okay. It's a, it's a very good chapter for someone, anyone who's in any type of Krishna conscious relationship. It's, it's important to read. Um, it talks about the need for, well, first of all, what is intimacy? There's different kinds of intimacy. And that is, that is actually as Prabhupada say, said, is it, it's actually a need for the soul to have some kind of intimate connection. And, okay, let's see. Frank Observations, this is the author. He says, some rare couples have attained an elevated state of Krishna consciousness and are able to follow the highest standard and live together and connected in peace and harmony. So there, there's understood to be gradations of standards according to someone's adhikar, according to someone's particular qualification. Some couples are able to abstain from sex because they have developed a mutual resentment and dislike, and they remain together out of sense of duty, living in a strained parallel world with this little sense of connection. Some couples are able to follow the highest standard for some time, but later concede to lesser standard in marriage. Some couples, some neophyte couples are able to follow the highest standard for some time and imagine that they're in an elevated spiritual platform. After a while, they may fall victim to extramarital illicit sex, pornography, or prostitution. Ironically, they may preach the highest principle in a fundamentalist manner. Some couples have one spouse who wants to follow strictly and the other need who needs the who feels the need for sex. Many of these strained situations end in divorce. And many of our second generation lacking seek, seeing lack of convec, con, affection, pervasive marital discord and a high rate divorce rate of divorce in new Vaishnavas and secular society for her prefer to cohabit rather than marry. And so one thing that they share is they, sh they do share um, that Prabhupada himself spoke on the, what this means, this regulation. He spoke about it sometimes in very strong manners and sometimes in a very more um, uh, relaxed manner. For example, there was, um, let's see. I'm just kind of flipping through the book. I'll just I'll just share one uh, one verse from the Bhagavatam. It's from the eleventh canto. Um, let me see if I can follow, follow, find it. And it's it's about this principle of people people being on different levels, and thus having different. Um, let me see if I can find it. One second. I'm looking at the time to search. Oh, does it come up? No, I don't think it's coming up. Okay, let me see if I can just remember. So the verse is saying, it's in the 11th canto, and it's saying um, for someone who is already on the ground he can't fall any further 
And in the commentaries, it talks about how something that can be uh, horrible for one person is considered actually a step forward for another. For example, for a sannyasi to be attracted and attached to women, bad, not a good thing. But for a husband to be attracted and attached to his wife, good. You know, that's, that is, you know, they're, they're regulating him. And another example, it says, for a brahmana to be attached to uh, drinking alcohol, bad. But for an alcoholic it, 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 to drink maybe, and this is not our suggestion, but for him to drink in a regulated fashion is maybe a step forward. Not that, um, and, and, and one purport, I remember this, I'm just remembering a purport, I think it's from the second canto, is that everyone should always try to make, don't just stagnate in whatever situation, we should always try to um, improve our practice of devotional life, not, not just staying in one, one, one platform. But there are um, understandings that not everyone can follow the same standard as somebody else. Some people may have, you know, be born with particular some scars, like they, their parents are both very exalted devotees, and then they have, they live in an ashram as a monk until they're, you know, 20 years old, and they just, maybe they have good, great credits from their past life that make things uh, easier for them that it, that would be almost impossible for somebody else. And therefore, uh, the bottom line kind of uh, uh, regulation is that it has to be regulated within marriage life. There's the high standard, is very high standard, Prabhupada says, like, uh, you know, it's only for procreation. It's only at the time when necessary for procreation. And then the low standard would be, um, you know, one partner in marriage, you know, in, in, the, in the commitment of marriage. Then the person's impulses are becoming regulated. Vishaka, you're going to your class. Your Shaka is starting doing a, her first your first job yeah come say hi to everybody i can put it here so it doesn't the effulgence is flashing she's got her green hair and let's see there you go <laughs> and your anime earrings yep Tanjiro earrings. Yeah. She's going to go to a, a devote. A devotee has a runs a book at the flea market. And so she's going to go help that uh, devotee run the little stall. And she's 13. She's got a job. <laughs> Any reflections, comments, questions? What was the book you were reading from? Oh, let's see it again. It's Heart and Soul Connection. It is, let me read the whole subtitle there. Heart and Soul Connection, Devotional Guide to, to Marriage, Service, and Love. And it is put together by the Grihasta Vision Team. Grihasta, um, Edward G. Heard of that. Yeah. Heard of that. Uh, you know who was involved in this book was Mother Krishna Nandini. She was, I was actually just, hearing her interview again um, on nice. Wisdom State is a, a old elderly African-American Mataji who um, spoke very nicely about she, there. I don't know if some of you might not remember, but she was uh, getting ready to leave her body. And then she's, she's, she has since left her body. She's, I, I met her many, many times here in Dallas. She actually uh, was initiated by Prabhupada here in Dallas. And um, 
nice story. Her mother actually, her mother, her, her and her mother got initiated here, the Prabhupada. Um, um, I know her children as well. Her, one of her sons would come when we had our Wednesday event. She, he would come regularly to on our, with his with his daughter, which she is like the she looked like a baby doll. She was just super duper cute. So Grihasta Vision Team, um, we both put together by the Grihasta Vision Team. It's a little bit more frank talk about the subject in that book. I mean, there's a whole lot of things that that's just one sub, one chapter. It, it kind of mentions in the beginning of the chapter, it says, I hope you didn't just jump to this chapter. <laughs> okay. Edward G, any um, questions or reflections? And uh, we can go on practice. I did a practice. Yep. Practice. Jabuji, any questions, reflections? Mm, I find I found something interesting about that conference you were talking about, uh, given by Prabhupada. He said something like that if we are not ready to to guarantee our children to be liberated from all oh, the verse, the yeah, yes. yeah, we shouldn't uh, uh, we shouldn't even think about having children if we are not gonna be able to guarantee uh, their guarantee. sadhana in order to come out of samsara so i thought that was really really great something to yeah. think about that's uh yeah the, something um, to talk about also pitaro nashat uh guru nashat it says don't become a guru don't become a father don't become a leader uh it gives a long that's a verse gives a long list like if you're not gonna uh, guarantee some liberation, not some give, guarantee liberation, uh, uh, then don't take these roles. And so there is a pressure that we have to actually facilitate that, that liberation. So we have to become liberated and we have to also facilitate those who are under us, that all, those who are um, taking instruction, taking shelter, taking leadership from us. Uh, there, that we have the proper tools and we have the proper um, consciousness, and then the and, and then that we're also passing that on to them. So don't have children like cats and dogs. Uh, Prabhupada also said in the lecture. Nice. And Raini, any any comments or reflections or anything like that? Okay. So I spoke with, um, I think it was uh, Bhakti Mark Swami, and we had, there was a also candid talk about this subject. And uh, many people, devotees are asking questions. This was in, um, in, in Mayapur, we're having this question and saying, you know, many, many folks are, are, can't follow that standard that only for procreation, they, they struggle with that. And so one devotee shared what their spiritual master told them. The spiritual master said that when a devotee is new and young, it's like a like a child. And if the child is uh, you know, like a baby, if the child is peeing and pooping in the diaper, you understand, okay, this is this is where they're at. But if the child is now 37 years old and they're still peeing and pooping. <laughs> If your diaper, like, wait a minute. Yeah. So similarly, if someone is, you know, starting with spiritual life at the age of 20, and they have a lot of passions, but they're now, they're 67 years old, but they're still very much attached to all those passions. Like, wait, no, no, no. <laughs> Actually, that, therefore, there's what is called vanapras. That means no more whatsoever. That's, that's the stopping point. That that license is now revoked. Okay, so let's practice our verse. Balam Balavatam Chaham. Mm -hmm. 
Kama Raga Vivarjitam. Dharma Virudho Bhuteshu. Kamosmi Bharatarshava. Balam Balavatam Chaham. Kama Raga Vivarjitam. What you look at, Vishaka? Oh, okay. Dharma Virudho Bhuteshu. Kamosmi Bharatarshaba. Oh, Dana Kay, I didn't see that you were back. Do you have any questions or comments on the verse? Not yet, but I'm really, this is, this is okay. really enlightening, so thank you. Another point about this Kama, Kamosmi Bharatar Shabdharma Varudha, that any desire, because the, the kind of sensuous side is, this, is the, the most extreme form of that word, but Kama just means any desire. So any desire, in the service of Krishna and 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 the it, under the dharma uh, under the regulations of dharma, Krishna is saying that is a representation of me. Not 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 even. So all all desires become sanctified when they are put in the regulation of dharma, or even better, the bhakti dharma, meaning fully dedicated in loving service to Krishna. Palam Balavatam Chaham Kama Raga Vivarjitam Danike, what are some words there that are like hard to pronounce for you? There's, uh, uh, there's some of that are long, so I'll just look like Vivarjitam Vivarjitam yeah, that's one of them. <laughs> Vivarjitam. And then this, in the next line, that first yeah. word is like, whoa. Yeah. Dharma. Dharma. Aviruddha. Aviruddho. Aviruddho. Uh, Dharma uh, aviruddho. Bhuteshu. Dharma Virudho. <laughs> Dharma. Avi Rudha. That's Rudha. The, the, the word for word is Avi Rudha. Avi Ra Rudha. <laughs> Rudha. 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 And what is it? Bharatarshava. That's another one. Bharata. Bharata? Bharatar Shabha. Tar. <laughs> Bharatar. Bharatar. Yeah. Bharatar. Bharatar. Shabha. Shabha. Bharatar Shabha. Bharatar. Bharatar. Actually, India is called. Uh, Bharat. That's what it says on the uh, uh, on the rupee note. They don't, they don't call it India in their own language, in the Hindi language. It's called Bharat or Sanskrit. Hmm. Some of the some of the cities are in India. They're actually um, uh, some of the cities are they're going back to some of the ancient Sanskrit names. Like there was Allahabad which is now called Prayag, which is the name that it was given five, that, that it had 5,000 years ago. Krishna went to Prayag. Yeah. Lord Chaitanya also went to Prayag. I went to Prayag. <laughs> That's where they have the Kumbh Mela. So it's cool, like, you know, 
you know, read the books and all the cities have the same names as they were 5,000 years ago. That's, that's really cool. Balam Balavatam Chaham. So, uh, Chapuji, you want to give us a practice and we'll re recite with you? Palam Balavatam Chaham. Kamayaga Viparajitam. Dharma Virudho Puteshu. Kamosmi Bharaparashava. I'm back. Can you, you can go again? Do it again. Hey. Of course. Right, thank you. Palam palavatam chaham kamaraga viparajitam parma virudho puteshu kamosmi bharatarshapa. Palam Balavatam Chaham Kamaraga Vivarjitam Harma Virutho Pute Shup Kamusmi Paratarishapa Okay, Rayani, give us a chant. Yeah, going off the chapu, that's going to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, the melody was beautiful. I cannot even, I'm not even attempting that. Balam balavatam chaham kamaraga vivarchitam dharma virudho bhuteshu kamosmi baratarshaba. Okay, who's... Uh... Name one of Krishna's expansions that uh, he's got one of the elements of the words of this of these verses, this verse, Krishna's expansion, and he has got spiritual strength. Balaram? Balaram, yes. Bala. So we can all do that. Just do this make some. Some strong poses. Bala. 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 Can we, other verses where we can do yeah. just like one word after the other doing a, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> a pose? Yeah, we, <laughs> that would we be do. Fun. Yeah, we do. We do. We do. Um, we, I think yeah. Last last verse we did we had what is the bee jump was the uh, the seed bee jump uh, sarva utanam all I don't know beings I forget we had what vidhi parta sanatanam sanatanam eternal uh, so balam balavatam vatam vatam I wonder if we can click on that vatam to see if there's any, any clue. Um, database. Balam, balavatam, chaham. I'll ask, Denny K, what does aham mean? Any guess? Sorry, right, I wouldn't unmute. I am. Yes. Is that yes. What important. Important. Uh, I was like, unmute, unmute. unmute. Yeah, what is <laughs> yeah. Aham. Aham. I am. Yeah. Aham. Um, aham. Nityanandra Chandra Dasaha. Aham. Nityanandra Chandra Dasaha. Bhavatyaha Nama Kim. Now you have to reply. Aham Nityananda Chandra Dasaha Bhavatyaha Nama Kim. 
Nama, your name. What is your name? You say Aham. Vadatu, Vadatu. Vola, Vola. Uh, Dana K, so you say Aham. I think she can't meet, unmute again. I know. What is wrong? Uh -huh. My connection's not real good. Aham. Uh -huh. Dana K. Dana K. Okay, so you just say it like. Oh. Okay. And then you, if you want to ask my name, uh, okay. you say Bhavataha. Bhava. Say it again. Bhavata. Bhavata. Ha. Ha. Bhavata. Ha. And Nama for name. Nama. And Kim is the question. What? Bhavataha Nama Kim. So you can uh, ask. Wow. Uh, ask Edward. Oh goodness. Is <laughs> it Bhavataha? Bhavataha. Nama. Nama. Kim. Kim. And Edward can reply. Say, Mama. Uh, Aham. Edward. Or you can say also another way to say it is, Mama. Nama. Edward. Mahodeya. Mahodeya means Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> We're talking horse. <laughs> okay, yeah. what, what was it? Mama Nama? Mama Nama. Mama Nama Edward. Edward, yeah. yeah. Mr. Ed, yes. <laughs> I still love that show. <laughs> and then for asking the same question, but if you want to ask a lady, it's Bhavatyaha. So you can ask Chapuji, Bhavatyaha. Bhavatyaha. Oh. Nama. Kim. Nama Kim. Is that Kim with a K? Kim? Kim with the K, yeah. It's, uh, it, you, the, I think it is the first verse. Oh, Kim, um, you find this word a lot actually in Gita because there's questions you know mm -hmm. and the first word is uh uh dharma kshetra kuru kshetra samaveta yutsava mamaka pandavat sachaiva kim akurvata sanjay what did they do uh, another cool word that's in that first verse is yutsu jujitsu yutsu means to fight which is related to jujitsu yutsavaha in Sanskrit means to fight. Um, and Kim Akurva to Sanjaya. Actually, the eighth chapter, there's a really cool story of a little side note here. Um, in the eighth chapter, um, you probably heard we talked about this before. There's a book called um, Gita. It is the glorification of the Gita by Lord Shiva. Uh, it is called, I'm forgetting the name right now, but it's, uh, he's telling Parvati all the different glories of each chapter, how someone got liberated or some kind of mystical, magical Krishna magic took place by a small little touch of, with, with that chapter. So there is, a um, there was a, a husband and wife that had become Brahma Rakshashas, they've been, they became ghosts uh, due to some past sinful activity. And they were residing in a tree because it says ghosts often take shelter within a tree. And the tree itself also had, had been some kind of uh, person who had um, uh, performed some sinful deed or something and he was stuck as a tree. And so the wife told the husband, how do we get out of Gita Mahatmya? Yes, yes, yeah, Gita Mahatmya, uh, the glories of the Gita. How do we get out of this situation of being ghosts? Uh, you know, Prabhuji, she, you know, she spoke like, a, um, they, they're Brahmanas, so they spoke Sanskrit to each other. And so he said, you need to know what karma is. You need to know, um, let's see, hold on, chapter eight, one second, this is a few more pages. 
You need to know what is Brahma. You need to know what is spirit. You need to know Kim Tat Brahma. You need to know what is the, uh, the self. And you need to know what is karma. And then she said, what is, uh, you know, what is Brahman? What is the self? And what is karma? And then poof, they were no longer ghosts. Because they accidentally said, one, she accidentally said one fourth of the first verse of a chapter. Because <laughs> she spoke Sanskrit. She said, Kim Tad Brahma, what is spirit? Kim Adyatma, what is the self? Kim Karma Purushottama. And oh, what is karma? Oh, uh, uh, oh great person, Purushottama. Which is the she just echoed the same words of Arjuna in one fourth of the verse, and poof, she was there like, whoa, we're no longer ghosts anymore. And then the tree also that were there under the tree also became liberated too. So, a little Sanskrit practice, bhava. It, ba, 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 what is this word? Uh, it's like your bhavatyaha. This this. That's the, the same root there. So balam, this is not another word. That's not the same word, but balam balavatam chaham. Kama raga vivarjitam. Dharma avirudho. Bhuteshu Kamosmi Bharatharshaba. So we must see the first half of the verse is the strength of the strong, but it's free from that kind of as what was Prabhupada say in the purport. Uh, it is it is not for personal aggression, it's not for personal uh, it's it's out of duty. It's out of what is the right thing to do. It's not to per personal aggrandizement. Are you excited, Vishaka? Yeah. Cool. If you need anything, let us know. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're, you got your five minutes late. Oh, okay, okay. You're good then. You're five minutes early. Good, good. Dharma avirudho bhuteshu. Kamosmi bharatarshaba. So, Danny K, you want to give it a chant or you want to do it together or how, how would you like to give it a try? We do it together. <laughs> okay. Balam Balavatam Chaham Kama Raga Raga Vivarjitam Dharma Virudho Dharma Dharma Virudho Bhuteshu Kamosmi Kamosmi Bharatarshaba Bharatarshaba Balam Balavatam Chaham Kama Raga Vivarjitam Dharma Avirudho Bhuteshu. All right, have a great day. Okay. Kamosmi. Bharatarshaba. Bharatarshaba. 
Who else do we have? Who didn't chant yet? Anybody? Edward, do you want to give another chant? Another chant? One, one, one line at a time. Balam balavatam chaham. Balam balavatam chaham. Kama raga vivarjitam. Kama raga vivarjitam. Dharma virudho bhuteshu. Dharma avirudho bhuteshu. Kamosmi bharatar shabha. Kamosmi bharatar shabha. Are any of you in the uh, reading groups, the sage groups coming up? I was offered a time that um, really didn't work for me. So um, I, I don't know if there, if I'm, I was going to email today and see if there was another option, but I think probably not at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Email them so they can organize the groups. I have to change mine too. Oh, okay. Yeah, to give give me an email so they have they'll have time to 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 change them. Love you, Vishaka. Love you, Papa. Right. <laughs> Danica, did you get to join a group? Did you hear about that? The Sage groups. I did. I'm excited. Oh, cool. You're in. You got you got a group. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, I got I got a group um, men's group on Thursday nights. So cool. All right. Um, Narayan, you want to give us a, a chant one one line at a time? Balam Balavatam Chaham. Balam Balavatam Chaham. Sorry, what did you say? Uh, one line at a time. Ah, okay. But we'll do it. I'm sorry. Balam balavatam chaham. Balam balavatam chaham. Kamaraga vivarchitam. Kamaraga vivarchitam. Dharma virudho bhuteshu. Dharma virudho bhuteshu. Kamosmi bharatarshaba. Kamos me Bharatarshaba. Okay, so Narayan, you got a uh, quiz for you without looking at the book. What does Aviruddha mean? Or there is another hard one, uh, Vij Vivarjitam. Was Aviruddha not, not um, sort of like not against law? Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the other one I didn't remember. Vi vi Vivarjitam means devoid of devoid of. It says Kamo Raga Vivarjitam, free from devoid of uh, common uh, raga. And... That balam, that strength that has that has no common raga in it. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Ba. And Dana K, what does Balam mean? Sticky uh, mute button. Or you can type it in too. Are you saying Mala? Is that what you said? Bala, Balam, Balam. Bala, what does Bala mean? Is that the strength? Strength, Bala? yes. And who's Krishna's Sorry, really my strong connection. brother? Who's Krishna's really strong brother? Balaram. Balaram. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, I think we're. I think we're all done here. I have. I have some. Um, some Krishna conscious uh, riddles that I that I put together over the years. Would you guys like to hear some of them? 